the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Matthew 21. It says, And all things, Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. What's the condition? Believing ye shall receive. This is the Bible. This is the word of God that is infallible. It says, What things soever ye shall ask in prayer. If you ask it believing, he said, Ye shall receive. Hallelujah. And yet, the truth is that we pray. And according to what we know believing to be, we really believe. Is that true? But then we do not find it happen. So why is that so? The frustration of unanswered prayers. Can I tell you the truth? Many people in the body of Christ are already used to their prayers not being answered. I hope you know that. We just pray because it keeps us spiritual. But the truth is, the average believer today does not even expect his prayer to be answered. Hallelujah. When we pray and the result comes, we are so shocked. And we say, Lord, I thank you. I know it's not my prayer. Have you heard people speak like that? Yet they prayed and they said, Lord, we trust your visitation. The frustration of unanswered prayer. When we lay hands on the sick and we pray, or when we pray about certain things, we say in the name of Jesus and everybody say Amen. And immediately after that prayer, people go and do something that they have already said God should do. For instance, when you say, Oh Lord, we are trusting you that um, you will do a miracle in this family. In the name of Jesus. We are trusting you that by six in the morning there should be a miracle. We believe this. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Three hours later, everybody is sweating around the house, finding solutions. And once it's evening, people say, look, let's, let's push this thing. They are making all the calls and doing everything we can do. Yet, what was the content of our prayer? Oh God, intervene. And we said, we believe, we know that you will do this. And when we said in Jesus' name, everybody shouted, in other words, let it be so. So there is a lot of frustration. Can I tell you something? Nobody wants to waste his time investing in anything that does not work. Are you getting my point? The reason why many of you know, and we teach in church, we teach people pray, pray, pray. Become prayerful. Become prayerful. Let me tell you the truth. Our concentration should not be to teach the people how to pray. It should teach them the principles of making the prayer work. If prayer really works, you will not need to tell anybody, pray. Is that true? Number two. The second frustration that I've seen in the body of Christ is what I call the seeming powerlessness of the word of God in the face of real life situations. Please take note of my my choice of words. Don't write what I did not say. The seeming powerlessness of the word of God in the face of real life situations. In the face of sickness, in the face of failure, in the face of evil, in the face of terrorism. Hallelujah. It's easy to believe and say, I believe your word. Your word works. You know, it has become a slogan in the body of Christ. The word of God works and people say, yeah, the word works. But the truth is, is it really working in our lives? Hallelujah. When we stand face to face with sickness, 
When we stand face to face with failure, when we stand face to face with evil, when we stand face to face with witchcraft, and all the things that tie the destinies of men now, for many of us, our testimony has been that the word did not work. In quotes, in the face of man. Is that true? We brought the word of God. We spoke the word of God. We believed the word of God. Many of us, maybe we found ourselves sick and we confessed by his stripes I am healed. The truth is, you would have died if you did not run to the chemist. Is that true? You spoke the word. You even probably listened to one koinonia message and obeyed everything as taught to the latter. Yet it seemed not to work. The second frustration I've seen in the body of Christ. One is the tragedy, the frustration of unanswered prayer. Number two is the seeming powerlessness of the word of God. I know people, I know churches that unfortunately were victims of bomb blast and all of that. And the church that blew up had scriptures written on their walls. Is that true? Answer me, is that true? Yes! These kinds of things happen. Many cars that have stickers, all sufficient God, and you see the kind of ghastly motor accident. One tire there, the other side there, half of the car and all the people died. Yet, the a scripture, is that true? was pasted here. So, there are many unanswered questions. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you want to contend for the glory of God, you must not allow anybody to pretend that those questions are answered in your life when they are not answered. The secret, listen to me, the secret to authentic Christianity is to keep asking those questions until you find an answer. I'm a very inquisitive person and I don't take yes sir for an answer. Praise God. Many of us believe a lot of things that we do not understand. And we just receive all kinds of junk that cannot be proven. And in the face of real life situations, they do not work. A sister speaks and says, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, male and female, he created them. You began to speak that word at 23. Now you are 37. And no man has come. Yes! Yes! Yes, you've been speaking that word, truly, genuinely. I know people who their phones are full of scripture. They are ringtone scripture, text tone scripture, alarm tone scripture. They sleep with Bible, audio Bible. They wake up with audio Bible in their car, at work, their laptops. Everything is the word of God, yet there is nothing changing it. And these people are asking questions that we, the men of God, are ashamed or afraid of confronting. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? Hallelujah. There are many homes that have been raised by armed robbers. And while they were shooting people at the point of death, the people were saying, I shall not die, yet they died. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Tonight, I'm, I'm here to provoke. Maybe it's just me that thinks about these things. Does it happen to you? The reason is because we have created a protocol in ministry that shuts your mouth. Is that true? So when you want to ask us, they say, keep quiet. You go and meet an average pastor with this question. And they will tell you it's because you are a baby Christian. Is that true? I, I tell you the truth. That is not an accurate answer. We are going to explore the word tonight. There must be an answer. Everybody said there must be an answer. Otherwise, what do we have to tell the world? Listen, if we cannot answer this question, why should I not go to a herbalist? Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Why should I not go to the person that we used to worship? At least we worshiped that shrine and had 12 children. Now I'm coming to worship the only true God. And that word does not work. Yes! We stand on stage as men of God and we tell people do not worship idols. And believers are confused. I cannot understand. You go to a native doctor's place. She will never ask you, do you believe in me? She will never ask you, do you agree? You will say, sit down. 
and you will watch the shock of your life. That man will manipulate spiritual laws to your confusion. He will bring a goat and it will disappear in your presence. And you say, the gods have eaten it. It's a goat. And you will live with, with a, a level of confidence. You know that that political position is already your own. Because you saw the goat disappear. You, di you didn't need to believe the man. You didn't need to do anything. But when we come to the church, we believe. We claim that the word of God created the heavens and the earth. We claim that he upholds all things by the word of his power. Is that true? We claim that we have been born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Yet the truth is, for many people in the body of Christ, our results are either so little or there is nothing at all. We sing all kinds of powerful songs. There is power in the name of Jesus. The truth is, it's just that the song has a lot of melody. Many of us have not seen the reality of that song in our lives. We sing it because it's one of those nice, well-composed songs. And we, we hope that by continually singing it, one day we'll see something in our lives. There are, there are many of us that have not really seen the manifestation of the Word of God working in us. The things we call the working of the word of God, there are people who are not Christians who are getting the same result. It's not really very unique. Is that true? Number three, the third frustration that I've seen in our Christian experience, this is probably the greatest of them all. The inability to make the power of God manifest to solve human problems. The inability, the inability to make the power of God that the Bible tells us has been made accessible to us, that preachers tell us have been made accessible to us, the inability to bring that power to the sea in the face of real trouble, in the face of real danger, is someone getting blessed tonight? The inability to make the power of God manifest to solve human problems. We have been told that we have unlimited power in Christ. Is that true? The average church has taught the believer that you are powerful. You are not ordinary. You are born of a victorious life. Luke 10, 19, he said, Behold, I give you authority. I give you power. We have been taught. But when it comes to bringing that power, to making it manifest, to solve the problems and the predicaments of life, we are like the prophets of Baal. Many of us have called from morning till night and nothing has happened. Is that true? Oh, but look at your, your Bible. The Bible says Elijah was so confident about the working of this power, he was mocking the prophets of Baal. If I'm the one, I will be in a state of holiness so that I, I don't say anything that will stop the power from working. Elijah was so confident, he was mocking the people. He said, maybe Baal is sleeping. Call him more. This is a man that was so confident. And when it was evening, he said, all right, let me show you people something. When the king was afraid, when Naaman came and met him, the prophet said, let him come. And he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. There is certainly something wrong with our Christianity. And if we do not confront it, life will force us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Life will force us and place us in a position that we will have to prove whether we are authentic or fake. Be careful when you call a man fake. Verify whether he's working in your own life first. These three things have frustrated many believers. Our prayers don't seem to be answered. And even when it is answered, it looks like it is locked. Because it looks like we can't reproduce it. Ah, praise God! My prayer request at the miracle service was answered. Praise the Lord. So you don't know whether the headache really went because you dropped the prayer request or it just went because you are eating well and the body killed itself. 
Is that true? There must be some level of authentic results that can stamp. You know that this one came as a result of the answer. Help us, Holy Spirit. There is something we are missing in the church. I'm obsessed about studying the ancient church. And let me tell you something. We are not close. We are not close to what the book of Acts. You know, um, it fueled up my curiosity again because the school of ministry students were studying with were, were studying Acts, the book of Acts, all through this week. And um, as I read through, some of the students are just remembering. I know you didn't read anything. Praise God. If you can answer these questions, listen. Whoever can answer this question will rule in this earth today, here and now. These are the questions that the governments of nations have not been able to answer. Preachers have answered little of these questions to an extent. Very little. And we have esteemed them so high. But I pray that God will open our eyes. There has to be a way. The Bible said there is a path. Although no fowl has seen it, it is there. There is a path. He said, and the whelps of the lion. Can we be so sure that we come, when we come to the house of God, solutions will be provided, guaranteed? Can we be that sure? Praise the Lord. So what is the problem? What is the problem? What is the missing link? What are we missing? How many of you believe that God is almighty? Let me see your hands. How many of you believe that these issues that I've talked about, the problem is not from God? Is that true? That means we must search. We must search. We must search. Oh God, open our eyes. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. I will see of the wonders of your word. I will see how for joy. I will see of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Hallelujah. I've studied this thing carefully and I've come up with two solutions that I want us to consider based on the word of God. I truly believe with all my heart that the solution to these problems and these frustrations lie in two things. And that if we solve these things, then we will see levels of the glory that we have never seen. Number one, I believe that the missing link is that we lack the faith to back up our prayers, to back up our words, and to back up our steps or actions to release the power of God. I believe that the first problem is a faith problem. I am absolutely convinced that the first problem, the reason why we have unanswered prayers, the reason why the word of God seems to be powerless, the reason why we are unable to bring the power of God here and now to solve problems. At best, we have, we have done well 
in getting the power of God in the meeting to throw people down and they fall down and stand up and then here and there there are a few wheelchairs and a few blind eyes and a few deaf ears and a few cancers a few HIV very little in a meeting with over 100,000 people if only 20 people are healed that's a shame for that meeting hallelujah is that true? is God challenging us tonight? We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things And we press in thee There's gotta be more, gotta be more There's gotta be more than this There's gotta be more There's gotta be more Hallelujah Let me tell you something Please, I want you to agree with me tonight. What we have been taught as faith, what many people have moved around with as faith is not faith because it's not producing what the Bible says faith will produce. See, we must humble ourselves and admit that there's something we are not getting well. It doesn't mean we are not born again. Are you getting my point? This is the school of the Spirit. We must come to a point where we accept that there are a lot of dots in our Christian experience. And if we will cry enough, we will find answers. I made up my mind that I will serve my generation with authentic Christianity. Hallelujah. No man will fool me and deceive me into just believing. You know, we, we find all kinds of theological explanations and we circle away the dots and we just say, you just keep trusting God. No. No. The Bible says, through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man through desire, when there are unanswered questions, and you refuse and say, I don't care who the man of God is. If the answer, listen, I may not know what the answer is, but I know when it is the right answer. Hallelujah. That's what will draw us through desire. A man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddle with all wisdom. So there is a faith problem. And we are going to discuss that very seriously. There is a real faith problem. Why is there a faith problem? Because we have been taught, listen, that faith comes when you receive or hear the word of God. Which is true. But the question is, Many of us do not settle down and find out what the servant of God was saying. Because when he said faith comes by hearing, they did not have this. I hope you know. So what was their word of God? They didn't say faith comes by opening a book. They didn't have this. King James was not there. Is that true? They were not even permitted to have all of this. In. They only had the books of the prophets, the Pentateuch, and all of this, you will see it in Luke chapter 4. Jesus would come and they would bring it out. He would read it and they would close it back and go and keep it. Yes, they said, faith comes when you hear. Let me tell you something. True faith, Bible faith, faith that really moves mountains, is a product of an encounter. It's a product of an encounter. It's not a product of confession and judging yourself into some psychosis or metaphysics. Faith, Bible faith that moved mountains and will move any mountain is a derivative of a real genuine encounter that brings a reality in your spirit that supersedes any experience, supersedes any pressure. This is the factor that we are lacking in the church. I truly am convinced that this is one of the reasons 
why we are not seeing the power of God. The psalmist said, O oh Lord, you are my God. He said, early will I seek you. My soul longs after you. He said, to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. I want to see what I saw in the church in my life. Why must it always happen and only happen here at Koinonia? It can happen in my life. I can carry it like an atmosphere. Faith that is a product of a real encounter. Listen. Did you know that all through scriptures, men who had faith did not know that the name of what they had was called faith? I hope you know. What did they call it? They didn't even know what it was. The patriarchs, many of we call Abraham the father of faith. How many times did Abraham mention the word F-A-I-T in the Bible? Any man that has an encounter must have faith. No matter how much you are a doubter. If you, what is faith? Faith is conviction. Persuasion. Conviction. Persuasion that compels you to take action. Persuasion. Conviction. Our conviction about God is very weak. Because we have not had an encounter. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Come, Pastor Fanny. Hold this phone. Feel the phone around. Go back to your seat. Do you believe there is a phone here? Are you trying to believe it? Are you trying to force? Are you trying to touch it? Touch it? Are you trying to? There is, you had an encounter with this phone and you know if I come to you now and use scientific formulas and I say, do you know that that phone has gone? You can die believing it. That's true. Listen to me. Bible faith is a product of an encounter with God. Faith comes by hearing. You don't hear what you read. You don't hear what you read. It takes more than reading for it to become faith. You don't hear what you read. When you read, when you look, you see what you read. Is that true? But the Bible says faith comes by hearing. There is an activity that must happen. And that leads me to the second solution. Because until you embrace the second, you will never experience the first. The second solution, and I feel like crying as I say this. Get me. Number two, dishonor. That I'm, I'm trying to analyze what I think is a problem. Or what is the solution? The missing link. Dishonor or little regard for the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Is it possible to have the fact? Hallelujah. Dishonor and little regard, if at all any, for the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. I don't know whether it was by demonic manipulation or whatever. But we have come to a point where we have rejected the greatest gift that Jesus gave unto men. The gift of this person of the Holy Spirit. We talk so much about eternal life. We talk so much about the way, the life of God. We talk about that invincible life, that incorruptible life. Yet, the average believer in the body of Christ knows nothing about the Holy Spirit. A few Pentecostals just know that He is that agency that can make people to turn around and fall down. Or pray in tongues. And that, that's the end of it. Yes. Jesus spoke so much about the Spirit of God. In fact, the Bible has this to say. He said all scripture, is that true? All scripture were derivative of what? The Holy Ghost moved upon 
holy men. And they wrote as they were inspired. That means without the Holy Spirit, what we have come to know as the word of God or scriptures is not even there. Please, are you, are you understanding what I'm teaching tonight? We have truly disregarded the ministry of this personality called the Holy Spirit. And it bleeds my heart. It bleeds my heart. While I, I started studying this, when I got to this part, I started crying and sobbing. The power of God just filled my room and I was crying. And the Holy Spirit kept ministering to me that the church has rejected the fullness of my ministry. The church has rejected the fullness of my ministry. And I started, you know, I, I, I was just singing and there was a song. I hope that we'll get to play, but that was a song that was all through in my heart. Dance with me, oh lover of my soul. To the song of all songs. Have you heard that song? The song of intimacy. I kept singing that song and I was just crying. I was saying, Holy Spirit, I respect and regard you more than anything at all. He's the number one lover of my life. And I kept singing that song. We have rejected his ministry, yet we want power. We have rejected his ministry, yet we want our prayers to work. We have rejected his ministry, yet we want prosperity. We want wisdom. Let me tell you, without the Holy Spirit, there can never be faith. Because the primary assignment of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. Are you getting my point? When you get born again, his primary assignment, it is the Holy Ghost that brings the reality of Jesus. It's not some mental accent or some imagination or hallucination. The Holy Ghost was vested with the responsibility of bringing and revealing the reality of Jesus. And then, when he brings that reality to you, he empowers you and he uses you to reveal the reality of Jesus to the world. What we lack in the body of Christ is a true encounter with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that furnishes a reality in us that is greater than our experiences, a reality that is greater than our pain, a reality that is greater than our, our ideologies. Is someone following what I'm saying? This is the reason. Listen, let me tell you, there is a law that works in this earth. Everybody moves in the direction of his greatest conviction. Are you getting my point? Everybody moves. We take steps in the direction of our greatest conviction. That means, if I set fire in this place, and I say, everyone, if you know you are born again and the life of Christ is in you, go and stand inside the fire. Everybody say, wow, the life of God, so way is at work in me. But the moment you finish that conviction, everybody will follow the path of his true conviction. Is that true? I couldn't sleep yesterday because I got so many text messages by people. So many. So many people were saying, should I do it? Man of God, I got an instruction. My parents woke me by 1 o'clock, by 2 o'clock. They said I should bath. Is it bath with salt or something? Don't laugh. Some of you did it. You are now laughing because we didn't see you. Some of you just went quickly. Just carry salt. And then you, you try to spiritualize it by saying, Blood of Jesus. Shabbat. It is not true. It is still, you are following the path of your conviction. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you. In the face of reality, what you really believe is what you will act. Is that true? In the face, we can fake this thing in church and wear nice clothes and sit down and act all kinds of things. But in the face of reality, it is your true conviction that is revealed. In the face of reality, what you really believe, what you really believe, in the last two weeks in Nigeria, herbalists have become millionaires. 
because all kinds of people, church people, pastors, all kinds of people, now that we are aware that money cannot buy the cure for Ebola, many people are running. If we can come to church and talk all kinds of nonsense. Many of us have remembered that we now have traditional rulers in our village. And many of, many of the people who have not been relevant in Nigeria are now coming. They are saying, say you have rejected us. You are intelligent. You went to school. You will now need us. And they are running back with all kinds of chiefs. People are traveling to the village and say, come home, come home. There is a solution. Listen. Listen, I want to tell you something. One of the things that I believe has corrupted our appreciation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is what I call an exa exaggerated intellectualism that we have brought to Christianity. Please listen to me. There is too much emphasis on intellectualism. We have lost the glory. We have lost the supernatural in the church. See, a woman of God said something that touched me. She said, if this modern day church were the church standing at the Red Sea, the moment we were there, they would call elders first to go and negotiate with Egypt to say, oh yeah, hold on. Let's, we are envoys. We were sent by the church. While we bring preachers to start raising money to build a bridge. That's what we would have done. The modern day church will never imagine that that sea will part. And we say, oh Lord, we'll put prayer warriors to pray. We'll put kingdom financiers. We'll put intelligent architects and engineers. Let the building of the bridge begin. And God will watch and say, what is this? We have lost the reality. Listen to me. I believe in education. Don't get me wrong. I believe in mental development. We talk a lot about capacity building. But we have lost the authenticity, the simplicity of the presence of God. The glory of God, the supernatural power of God has been lost in the church. To an extent that anything we see that is above our intellect, we criticize and we doubt it. Yet, some of the people that do this are pastors. We want to find intellectual explanations for everything. We have lost the reality of the supernatural in the church. And it must be preserved. Because the supernatural in the church right now is an endangered species. There must be men and women who will protect it. Everything is analyzed in the church from an intellectual point of view. We have gone to school. We have degrees. And when a man comes on stage to speak, he says, I'm a professor, I read pneumatology, I read this. Please don't get me wrong. I honor education, I honor great men, I honor intellectuals. I'm talking about an exaggeration, bringing it out of its boundary. I read advanced theology, I spent 32 years studying this and that. Everybody says, wow, this guy's an intellectual. Believing that he can solve the problem and everybody takes it viral. And when an ordinary brother just comes out from the wilderness, who they just go, what do you have to say? Brothers and sisters, listen to me. What is happening in the world right now is a demonstration of how little intellect can contribute to the well-being of people in the face of spiritual forces. Demons did not go to school, but they can torment a professor. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's too much emphasis on our intellect. And if it is not intellectualism, we don't receive it. Show me how A and B will become C. There's so much intellectualism. We come on stage and we present speeches to people. And they say, wow, that was such a nice speech. And the sick go back sick. The blind go back blind. The oppressed go back oppressed. Because we have lost the reality of the glory. He said, woe unto you, teachers and doctors of the law. You will not enter the kingdom and you will stop those who want to enter. Every time God wanted to do great things, he found ordinary men who would not resist the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have ignored his ministry. We have ignored his ability to reveal the reality of Jesus there are many people, if Jesus were to walk physically today, we will pass him and not know he's the one. Because the, the activity of the Spirit is not even at work in us. If Jesus came to many of our assemblies today, we will drive him out. 
Is someone getting what I'm saying? I'm trying to let us know that there are idols that we have lifted. And one of it is not just witchcraft. It is the overemphasis on intellectualism. The Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But you try to lay hands on many people and they look and say, what is all that? Please, wisdom is profitable to direct. So we like scriptures that are close to our intellect so that we can explain it. But let me tell you, there is a supernatural generation that is arising. Ebola has proven to the world that it takes more than intellect to reign. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right now, the whole world is, is standing still. We are depending on doctors and microbiologists. And you can imagine the pressure that is on our doctors and professors and microbiologists. They are sleeping and waking up in the lab. They are under all kinds of pressures. Hmm. It is at that point of darkness that the church can arise. Are you getting blessed? Ebola has proven that the Christianity in Africa and Nigeria is very weak. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We must admit it from we the men of God. Let's tell ourselves the truth. It is a disease that money cannot buy the solution. If it could buy it, there are people who have the drugs and then will claim who claim that it's because we are men of God. But right now, it is your individual faith that can stand up to you. At that point, the robber hits the road. You carry your degree and place it upon Ebola and say, in the name of Jesus, meet Nigeria. You carry your, your money, withdraw, carry your ATM card and place it and say, all the demons. Look at how fear is killing people. One announcement spread like wildfire bath with salt and water. Every, nobody even found out whether it was Jesus that said it, whether it was the devil, we will find out on Sunday. Meanwhile, let me hurry up and do it. It tells you that all this courage will have been bouncing in church. In our heart, there is fear. They said, bath. We laugh at the man for bathing seven times. Is that true? Now it's beginning to make sense. There are many preachers that did it. But on Sunday we will now stand and say you go back. Many people took their bath. Trust me. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. No, 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 no. It's not condemnation. It's, this is just a discussion. We are saying that there is a reality. Brothers and sisters, I want you to imagine for one minute that if the government of Lagos State did not manage what happened and it spread like wildfire and came to the north. What we that's when all our talk touches would have it would have been put. That's the Mount Camel experience. Everybody would now stand and we will be tried by fire. So no men who are of the secret and men who are out. But let me tell you. I do not tell you that many of these kinds of things will not come. Getting afraid is a waste of time. Rise up in the spirit. And you will get to a point. Listen, this was the same kind of disease that happened in the days of a man called John Lake. Come on now. Generals indeed. These were men that truly you could say men. They didn't make so much noise. But they were men with evidence. John Lake went to help the doctors when the foam in their mouth you know when many people heard the story they thought it was exaggeration now you know it's true that even if the foam touches your hand you can, you can contact it and while the doctors were doing their best John Lake went and was helping to bring out the dead people with his bare hands and after weeks nothing happened to him and the doctor said what is the secret and he said great is the mystery of godliness God can dwell in a man. And this guy proved this scientifically. He said, let's go to the lab. Put the foam of the dead man on my hands. And they took it. He said, check it. 
Let me show you that I represent a true God. And he brought a harvest. Spokane was the healthiest city in the whole world. See, to be a healing technician in John Jake's healing school, you would need to heal seven people. That's your admission letter. Seven people. Proven healing. To be considered as one of the healing technicians. What are we bragging for? But can I tell you, the Bible says, shall their own belief make the faith of God of none effect? We can sit down as if God is powerless. We can sing all kinds of songs. I will never worship man made God. You are about him. Keep singing. I will never worship man made God. Blah, 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 blah. If we don't stop this, this hypocrisy and settle down for authentic apostolic Christianity, we will be in for a shock in this country. So in the north, there's Boko Haram. In the south, there's Ebola. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. This is what God is telling Nigeria. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, there is a supernatural dimension to life. Life is not just physical. Life is not just intellectual. The Holy Ghost seeks to reveal a reality to us. When God called me, I told God I don't want to be sick. I want to stand in for truth. And I made up my mind that I would pay any price to make sure that I do not handle the word of Christ deceitfully. That when I tell people Jesus can heal, I will prove it. If I tell people Jesus can bless, I will prove it. If I tell people Jesus can save, we will not gather people for miracle service and come and be lying and faking miracles. So, oh God, if the anointing is not on me, let's counsel it. This is how I pray. I have no business trying to build ministry, trying to build a reputation. Can we give the body of Christ? Can we give Nigeria? Can we give Africa something tangible that will enter history? Can the governments of nations call on the church and say Ebola is killing us? Where are the healing evangelists? The fact, look, let me tell you, in the days of God's generals, listen to me, Alexander Dowe was called the spiritual mayor of his city. The government consulted with him. If it were in the days of the apostles, by now, the government will be having a meeting with the men of God to say something is wrong. We hold crusades and pack it full. And no man can come out and say, where is the God of Elijah? Brothers and sisters, I'm not saying this as one who has attained. This is a cry for all of us to cry. I'm saying that let's stop boasting. There is still a lot to be done. Thank God for what we have done. Thank God for the wheelchairs. But let, where is that audacious voice that will not stand? Not Thank God for, ah, I wish men like Benson Idahosa were still alive. These were the men, Archbishop Benson Idahosa. If this man was still alive, he would have gone on NTA and said, according to the word of the Lord, that's a true prophet. Not just names and phone numbers. Standing and saying, I declare that this spirit that came from the sea, called the Ebola, passed over Africa and he would go back and sleep. A man that went round the world 52 times. White men trembled at his presence because he took time to know God for real. Is the hand of the Lord too short that he cannot see? Is it that there are no voices? 
Many of us claim that we saw Jesus every day. There are men of God that say every Sunday I'm now seeing Jesus. We have not seen the effect. Men who saw Jesus in the Bible, even those who were close to them fell. And it took them a long while. I keep saying this thing and please don't get me wrong. I'm not criticizing the body of Christ. I'm part of it. I'm challenging the body of Christ. That we must stop lying to ourselves in the name of Christ. And right up there is so much more. Because Ebola is not a virus. Ebola is a spirit from the sea. And it arises with rage. They are called rulers of darkness. They reign every time there is ignorance. But there must be men of the secret place. Every time there is a manifestation of evil, God will send a man he has been training. When Jezebel, that witch, oppressed the prophets of God, the Bible says, and Elijah the Tishbite, where are the Elijahs? We are building churches, building cathedrals. Thank God for helping the poor. I believe in charity, but it will not save the world. We need the demonstration of the reality. A reality that is greater than medicine. A reality that is greater than politics. And brothers and sisters, if God is calling you into ministry, don't be in a hurry to start printing banners. If you have printed it, fold it and keep it in your room because there is a lot of work to be done. Jesus' power, Koinonia Cathedral. We, we implicate ourselves with dangerous names and people come hungry and we come and waste their time. We did everything. We did everything. We will. We did everything. We did everything. We will shout for your praise. Can we pray and know that our prayer can have a national impact? Can we speak and know that there is a force that backs our word that no government can do? Can we bring the power of God to bear? A few of the victims that have contacted Ebola now are humanly speaking going to die. Yet there are many people who talk life-giving spirits in Nigeria. And nobody can even send a handkerchief. Because the truth is, this is a miracle that the reputation of any man of God that dares to try is at national stake. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Isaiah saw these days and he said it. Behold, darkness will cover the earth. Things will challenge our convictions. Things will challenge our faith. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Hear me. We must become men and women of the secret place. Everybody say the secret place. We must embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Come, hold my hand. The Bible says, and the Lord, listen, look at me, and the Lord walking with them, walking with them, confirming their words with signs following, and the Lord walking with them, and the Lord healing through them. And the Lord delivering through them. He said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We have not entered there yet. He said, I shall fear no evil. Is that true? Is that true? But are we not afraid of evil? As darkness looms over the face of Africa. Governments have been having meetings for weeks. Because right now it's not an issue of money. The God of money, the God of gold has been brought to his knees. And right now the world is crying. Can the church arise? Can the church speak? Dishonor to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been crying across the face of Nigeria. And we have ignored him. 
because we want to build branches. We have ignored him because we want to wear suits. We, we have ignored him because we want crowd. We have ignored him because we are contented with the little miracles and all the things. Share me! Any man that disregards the ministry of the Holy Spirit is about to pay for it in the days that were coming. This is not an option again. Ebola is only a shaking. He said, and I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth. I'm not saying it is God that has brought it, but I'm telling you that there are symbols. There are many spirits like Ebola. These are devils from the sea. These are devils of the air. The Bible calls them the rulers of darkness. And if the church does not present something real to the world, can I tell you what will happen? Our churches will be full on Sundays and every other harbor shrine will be filled during the week. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When the going gets tough, I guarantee you, men will return to traditional Christianity. This one that you see people say, fake man of God, everybody will soon become fake if we don't take time. Because when things, when people start dying, I hope you know people don't want to die. When people start dying, I guarantee you, they will start running to Habalist. And it will not be hidden. It will not be hidden. And they will wait to slap the person who says, why are you going to a harbor? So the church must arise. I thought through these things. It is faith, brothers and sisters, that move mountains. Never forget this. We need an introduction of Bible faith. Our fathers caught something that was real. Unfortunately, for many of us now, in this church that we have now, the Church of Christ in Africa as a continent, and for the most part in Nigeria, our proof of faith is that money is in our account. That's largely our proof of faith. So if I have a big church, if I have a glass house, if I have a flashy jeep, I say faith brought it. If that faith brought it, that faith should raise the dead. That faith should heal the sick. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout. Let me tell you something. There is an army that is rising. Please believe me. I have been saying this thing for a long time. There are men and women who are saying no to the things people have said yes to for a long time. And they are staying. They are paying the price. And the Bible says, call on to me and I will answer. He said, I will show you. I will show you. If you call on to me and you mean business, not call on to me to use me. Not call on to me to use me to build a church. Not call on to me to use me and get a wife and get a husband and get money. Thank God for this thing. Not call on to me to use me and get anointing. He said, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. And when you find me in that secret place, he said, I will show you. I will show you more than good talk. I will show you more than rema. I will show you the secrets of the spirit. And on the strength of that encounter, true faith will come. Listen, they called in Lystra, they called Paul. And who now? Was it Barnabas? They called them Zeus and Hermes. These were Greek gods. Zeus and Hermes. This Zeus was the god of the atmosphere. They studied these gods. They have their history. Hallelujah. All of the gods, Zeus, Hermes, Apollo, all of these gods, they were gods of the air. The Greeks held these gods in high esteem. And when men who had stayed in the secret place, who were not looking for ministry or title or apostle or prophet, they were men who hungered for the things of God. The Bible says when they showed up, the men said, the gods have come down to us. 
they began to worship them. They said Paul was Hermes because he was the god of communication. He spoke. He was the, the god of, of intelligence. They called men Zeus and Hermes. I hope you know that Greek philosophers were intelligent people. They were not daft. So for a man to look at a fellow man and say, no, this is not a man. This is a god. May our generation restore the order of true power. May our generation prove to creation that Jesus fully died. May our generation prove. Oh God, I pray that you raise men who are genuine. Raise men that love your presence more than ministry. Raise men that love your presence more than power. Raise men who are not, they are not, they are not concerned about title. Raise men who are not concerned about church expansion and having the greatest name and having the greatest chief. Thank God for these things. But raise men who are envoys. It has nothing to do with your kind of church. Listen, there are many of you scattered in this crowd. I don't want to say it's everybody. But there are many of you. This cry is already like a body in your spirit. Because we are like a woman that is with child and traveling. When she gets to the eighth month, getting to the ninth month, lots of unusual things begin to happen. There are women here. There are ladies seated here who will walk in the anointings of Deborah. You are seated ordinarily. But you see, people don't believe it. They don't believe it because you don't look like it. But you know that your hunger for God is not natural. There is something. When others sleep, you wake up in the night on your bed and you can't sleep again. You don't even, it's a cry of destiny. God is searching. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God is hovering across Africa again and saying, will you reject me? Will you not embrace me? I strengthen John G. Lake. I strengthened Smith Wigglesworth. Kevin Kuhlman talked so much about him. We talk so much about, about Kevin Kuhlman. But we do not talk about the person that she talked so much about. Kevin Kuhlman cried and said, I'd rather spend five minutes. I would not spend five minutes without the Holy Ghost. This is my passion. I have a hunger. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it's taking me to. This is the hunger that drives me. I have no ambition for ministry. This is what drives me. Thank God for all of the blessings you meet on the way. But there is a hunger. I have seen in the vision of the Lord that a time will come. I've seen this many times. Where like the shadows of Peter Men will walk like God in this country. Men will walk. Let me tell you, the face of what you see as Christianity in Nigeria is changing. Yes, it's changing. There is an Elijah generation that is arriving. But the problem is, the level of attention we are giving God now will not equip us for the kind of grace and prophetic destiny that we have. There is so much distraction. We give God little time. We give the Spirit of God little time. Yet we want so much. Make me powerful. Make me great. Make me this and that. I desire you. Every time I'm alone, I say, Spirit of God, if I never become anything in this life, show me the glory of God. Reveal the reality of Jesus Christ to me. I've been praying, I've been fasting, and I've been telling the Lord, I want a visitation again from Jesus Christ. Thank God for the one I had, but I need a fresh visitation. There are questions I could not ask. I want to ask them now. There are questions many people are running away from. I am tired of preachers preaching powerful messages without the grace to back up what they are saying. The Bible says great grace was upon them. Not just grace in terms of touching it. A demonstration of the Spirit. 
the apostle will be preaching and someone will fall and die and you tell the people no cause for alarm you will go out and raise the person and not put it on newspaper when will that happen brothers and sisters is there such a time that this will happen in the body of Christ that a man can walk to people and these are all people in the wheelchairs and he says I bring you the authority of a government he's not asking questions he's not trying to claim he's not saying do you have faith or not no the authority and he tells them this is a sign that Christ is alive this is more than all the series of messages we keep teaching that people believe and there is no faith is someone hearing what I'm saying we pray for hours thank God for the prayers but our prayers are not backed up with grace. Our prayers are not backed up by authentic faith. Let me tell you the truth. If we have the faith to release on the kind of prayers we are praying, we will change the face of this nation. Hallelujah. God is calling us. There is a cry of the Spirit. Some of you started with God. You started very well. But little glory has distracted you and you have left this pursuit. Please sit down, guys. Some of us started. Some of you are here. Inside and outside. You started on a good note. You had this hunger. Now you don't know what has happened. Boyfriend has come to carry the hunger. Girlfriend has come to carry the hunger. You finally graduated. And the hunger has come. There are people in this place. God is speaking to you. And is telling you. You are still part of the army. You are still part of the army. I am counting on you. It may take a while. There are some of you who have not even made up your mind for Jesus Christ, but you are part of this army. And God is calling you. There is an urgency in the spirit. And don't you say it does not concern you. This has nothing to do with men of God. This is salvaging the soul of Africa. Salvaging the soul of Nigeria. Before Christ comes, Africa and indeed Nigeria will present to the world the true portrait of apostolic Christianity. Not just talk. If we do not contend, we are going to see more dead people in the next few years. Sicknesses will kill them because hell is boiling like a volcano and releasing the best of its arsenal. And let me tell you something. Like the prophets under the custody of Obadiah, we must stay. We must stay. We must pay the price. Many of us have all sorts of ambitions. Many of us have all sorts of things. But there is one desire. There is one ambition. I live only to see his kingdom come. That's my ambition. That's my ambition. That's my desire. I foresee a time when the church will walk in levels of glory. When the church will walk in the prophecy of Smith Wigglesworth. Before he died, he called and Murray, Lester Sumro, sorry. And he began to prophesy to him. He talked about our generation. And he said he saw the church rising in glory. Rising in power. Brothers and sisters, if we do not get into this dimension, our children are at stake of dying from viruses that doctors cannot cure. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we do not rise, the time will come our children will go to school and they will not come back again. Because a demonic spirit has eaten them up. But may God raise generals in the spirit. Men who can stand and say, Satan, before you pass through my family, come to me. The Bible says that you will take up poison and it will not hurt you. We are going to pray tonight. We are really going to take our time to pray. We are going to cry for an encounter. Listen. We need genuine encounters. It is only an encounter that will tell us which message is a lie. And which message is true. Every message sounds nice. But an encounter will bring the separation. There are many sick bodies that are waiting for our encounter. There are many lives and destinies. I spoke with my parents this afternoon and I told them, relax. 
you are totally covered. Covered from Ebola, covered from everything. Because there is an envoy who is still interested in the things of God. Many of you want your parents to die like chickens because you know they are not born again. And in some of us in our families, you are the only ones who are serious with God. And rather than rising, the devil wants to destroy your family. So he's causing your fire to go cold. So that when he comes, there is no man that can stand. He said they are taken for a prey and none say it rest on. They are taken for a prey and there is nobody who can stand. I'm ready to stand for my generation. It does not matter what it will cost me. I will preach. I will pray. I will teach. I will travel around and bring the reality of the glory of God. I may be criticized. The message may not be appealing. But I tell you the truth. This is what I was born for. And I will do this with all my life. I don't have multiple ambitions. There is one reason. One reason and one only. You must have a conviction that you can live and die for. Otherwise you are wasting your time in here. Stop escorting men in destiny. God is calling someone tonight. And is telling you start asking these questions. And start taking the things of God seriously. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 please. Oh, 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 and I will answer thee. I will show you what. There are great and mighty things. That we have not known. And we must say Lord show me. Show me. Thank God for the fathers. Thank God for what they have helped us see. But the times that we live in now. Require a higher conviction. Let me tell you. Moses did not do the great things he did because he was a man of faith. Moses did what he did because he had a real encounter. There was a real voice. You cannot doubt that voice. Every time I stand before sick people and I look at their situation, this is how God comforts me. At once, I receive the flash of the vision of my encounter with Jesus Christ or any of the encounters I've had, all of a sudden, faith arises. This faith thing that we are doing is, is, is theology. Let me tell you the truth. I know that I will be criticized for what I've said again. No problem. We permit your operation in this place. Just find men for the next 15 minutes. Let there be an awakening. Find men and women inside, outside, in the name of Jesus, tonight, i like you to drop anything that is not of God. Take God seriously, even if it's for the first time. Papa Parada da da ba da da ba da ba. Shi poka pa 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 da da ba da 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 ba. Shu pro shu pro para da ba da da ba shu pretekete. Simbre si ba da da ba. We cry, we cry for your glory. Let it come with greater intensity. Let it come with fire. Let it come with fire. We are tired of religion. We are tired of church. We are tired of pretense. We owe our generation a debt that we must pay. To the sound of our song. Oh uh-huh. 
Father, we repent from the desire to build ministry. We repent for giving the Spirit of God little place. We have exalted fame. We have exalted money. We have exalted education. But we want your anointing. We want your power. We want your glory. We want to give our generation something. Pray. Tell the Holy Ghost, find the habitation in my life. Find a place. Find a place. Find a place in my ministry. Find a place in my life. Find a place in my home. Koinonia, pray. The Holy Ghost is finding entrance into our life. Wherever you are, inside or outside. Go ahead, Spirit of the Living God, find man. Capture lovers in this place. Capture men. We call unto you. We call unto you. Answer us. We call unto you. We call unto you. Take my ambition, take my heart, take my life, take everything. to pray and say, Lord, give me an encounter. Not just this night. Give me an encounter that will produce real faith in my life. I am tired of faking it. It's not supposed to be so hard. It's because there is no encounter. It's not supposed to be so hard to heal the sick. It's not so hard to live in hell. 
is because there is no encounter. There's much prayer, but little faith that backs up the prayer. Much fasting, but little faith that backs the fasting. Much confession, but little faith that backs the confession. Hallelujah. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Use all of me, all of me. Take all of me, all of me. Hey. Use all of me. Use all of me. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Please take all of me, all of me, Lord. All of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. Give my everything. Will you have my everything? I dedicate my everything. Use my everything. I lay my everything. Take my everything. Give all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Just the voices. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands, as many of you who can lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, our hands are lifted because we mean business with you. And I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray like a man who finds the lover of his soul capture as many people 
even in this place. Make mighty men and women. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands inside and outside. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Capture men. Capture men. Take them to a realm of intimacy beyond that which they have seen. I release the ministry of the Holy Ghost inside and outside. I release the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Take men to realms of vision. Take men to realms of dreams. I stir up prophetic fountains. Take men to deep realms. The spirit of man is like a deep water. Lord, I pray. Let the hidden things of the spirit let the hidden mysteries of the spirit let eyes be open let ears be open may men hear the sounds of heaven may men hear the sounds of angels may men hear the sounds i open you up to start heaven encounters many of you will begin to have visions visions of angels visions of jesus God heaven encounter that will produce faith. Visions of heaven, visions of angels, encounters of the spirit, mantles of fire. You will become messengers of fire, messengers of power, messengers of grace, great grace, grace, great grace, grace. Great grace. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Would you take me to that place, Lord? To that secret place. That I see, you are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, not to give, I'll be a poor. You are my all in all. Just the voices. The voices. Jesus, Lamb, worthy is your name. Come on, call his name. This is the one who will empower the church experientially. Worthy, worthy 
I come against every sickness. I come against every infirmity. I come against demons. I come against powers. I come against thrones. Every spirit in this place that is not of Christ. I command you to live now. I command you to live now. Every sickness in this place. Everyone who is sick. The hand of God comes upon you right now. I curse every infirmity. I curse every pain. I curse every disease. And every destiny that has been tied up. I release you right now. I release you right now. I release every destiny that has been tied up. I prophesy the opening of the gate to every destiny that has been closed. I prophesy the opening of the gate to every ministry, every business, every life, every career, every destiny. I prophesy the opening of the gate. Hallelujah. In the next 10 minutes, i like us to pray. Hallelujah. James, please. We are going to pray for Nigeria. And we are going to cast this devil far from our lives, far from our family. James. Shila Prokasira Mondo Prokashira. James 5 from verse 17. James 5 from verse 17. Please, when it's time to pray, I'd like us to pray. The church is a powerful form. James 5. Can it be presented? Verse 17. Okay, let's just read it. James 5. Don't worry. Verse 17. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that there might not be rain. And it rained not in the earth, not in his country, not in his city, in the whole earth. By a space of three years and six months. And then verse 18. And he prayed again. And the heavens gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. We are going to pray. And we are going to challenge two forces. That plague our nations. Number one. Is the force of terrorism. Number two. Is this pestilence. Ebola and the rest. Are you ready to pray? The Bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous man. The fervent, heartfelt. Hallelujah. If you can hold your hands together, wonderful. We are going to pray. Lift up your voice and say after me, in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. We come again every virus every spirit every demon that wants to plague our families that wants to plague Nigeria that wants to plague Africa we command you to get out of this continent out of this nation and out of our families we command your powers broken by the blood of Jesus. Come on, lift your voice and pray. We caught Ebola virus. We caught every other virus. We caught every virus. We caught it from Liberia. 
We got it from Nigeria. We got it from the city of Lagos. We got the statistic said. We break the power of evil. We break the power of evil. We break the power. You are a spirit from the sea. We call you by day and we challenge you in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, the blood of the eternal covenant, we come with the rod of the higher priesthood and we challenge you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we challenge you. We challenge you. We challenge the shrine. We challenge the covenant that empower your operation. We challenge the enchantment that invokes you out of the sea. We challenge the power that strengthens your operation. We challenge every spell. We challenge every voice. We challenge every incantation that permits your operation across Africa, across Nigeria, across the face of this nation. We come with the rod of the higher priesthood. We come with the blood of Jesus. And we command you, we banish you, we banish you out of this nation. We banish you out of Africa. We banish you in the name of Jesus. We banish you. Come on, pray. Pray. When the church prays, we authorize heaven. In faith and territory, we are ambassadors and we are responsible ambassadors. No way to a border. We cut you from the heavens. We cut you. The Lord rebuke you. We cut you by the power of the heavens. We cut you above the power that we need you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No spirit arises on its own. It is invoked by incantation. The Bible says that woman that invoked the spirit of Samuel, it was a demon that appeared like the spirit of Samuel. Spirits do not just arise and enter territories. They are invoked by spells and incantation. We are going to pray one more time. We challenge the power that sponsored the release. Whatever prophetic code brought Ebola out of the sea, we cut you back with the rod of the higher priesthood. We cut those power. We cut those prayers. We cut it. Every force of divination, every force of necromancy, God gave it. Men who are connived with the heavens and the lifted spirit, we call the power from the second heaven. We call them, we call them from the other realm. We call them by the power of the Holy Ghost. The blood of Jesus, stronger, greater, stronger, greater, stronger, greater than every force, greater than every sacrifice that permitted them. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready to challenge the power of terrorism in our nation? Listen, let me tell you, no human being on his own can have the audacity to terrorize a people. There are spirits. We are not interested in the human being, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? It takes sacrifices to invoke this spirit. We are going to pray. 
our weapon of victory is the blood of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are not praying stupid prayers. We are praying prayers that produce results. The blood of Jesus paid a higher price than any enchantment that activates the operation of terrorism. And we are going to pray. We are starting from our Jerusalem. We are saying no way to Zaria. No way. No crisis. No fight. No way. And we spread it across the nation. Lift your voice and pray. We cripple the hand of the Holy We cripple the hand of blood death. We cripple the hand of wickedness. We break the hands of evil. We break the hands of evil. We break the power. We break gold. We set all that on fire. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. At first Samaria, our Jerusalem. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Gaza, Jerusalem. We pray for the peace. We pray for the peace. We pray for the peace of Samaria. Our borders are secure. Our debts are forgiven. Go. We pray for the nation. Pray for the nation. Pray for the nation. We pray for every land where they have been slaughtered. We pray for the church of Christ. 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 We pray Show the nation that you are not an idol. Arise, O great one. from the breath of your nose. Flow that is where the red sea. These activities of the Lord of the Wipe them out of our nation. May they be forgotten. Confront the power that sponsors the operation. Hallelujah. When a man gets up and tries to build a house and all he has is cement and that man is ready for frustration until he can bring the spirit component that will make that material project to work are you getting what i'm saying now anybody without a spirit will die a business without a spirit must die are you getting what i'm saying now a job without a spirit must die witches and wizards know this only believers do not know it there is no man no unbeliever no witch no no traditionalist will go and do anything physical without due consultation to the realm of the spirit because they understand that the physical is only an execution this is what david knew so when he saw goliath roaring i said forget about this guy this is a body without a spirit are you getting the point goliath was roaring and other people were crying and he said uh -uh, this is those who know will not be scared at all that roar and he said goliath i'm going to defeat you and goliath said am i a dog at least respect me you come to me with sling and david was trying to tell him mr man do you not know that the size of my body or my instrument is inconsequential for as long as there is a spirit backing and he says who is this uncircumcised circumcision is your key to attracting partnership from the realm of the spirit we are dealt with that right and I told you that your circumcision in the New Testament is your tithe. When Joshua circumcised the nation of Israel, at once an angel appeared to him. And he came to give him strategy. He said, I am, have come as a captain. In other words, he was also fighting. He was a warrior. But he was doing it spiritually. How many pastors are trying to do ministry without the spirit component? speaking english without the spirit component how many people want breakthrough want revivals no 
the body without the spirit is dead the second thing i want you to know is that the bible shows us that more than one spirit can influence a body that means a body can be a slave to the influences of more than one spirit for instance your human spirit and the holy spirit although they become one at new birth but it's only an example that this body that is a slave a mechanism for execution of the will of the spirit can be under multiple influences please listen to me we see that again and again in the bible we see peter being influenced by the spirit of god and being influenced by a demon spirit one moment the body is speaking thou art christ the son of the living god another moment jesus is rebuking from peter get thee behind me and he says satan, uh, peter satan has desired to sift you is that not true the bible tells us that when judas ate with jesus satan entered him so it was not just judas that got up and went out listen listen there is no man no man who does anything under the sun by pure bodily initiation it's not true it doesn't exist the body cannot initiate anything it only executes every initiation of anything comes from the realm of the spirit whether your human spirit the holy spirit a demon spirit that means the key to bondage and the key to liberty is not locked up in the physical it's locked up in the spirit since the body is an inevitable slave to whatever spirit watch this as i'm talking to you right now you are seeing a body moving and talking is that not true but you see this body well, don't mind this suit on it it's just to 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 look decent it's just for leadership and organization that's why we put a cloth for this body but the real person talking is the spirit man this body is only executing it are you getting me now and so if my body submits through my human spirit to the holy spirit because the human spirit is the vehicle for submission so the holy spirit in partnership with my human spirit can find expression if god wants to touch ken he now flows through my body and i speak it god is touching ken and i authorize the holy spirit through my body are you getting what i'm saying now and then he touches ken now watch this it is easy to know what spirit is influencing a man by what kind of physical activities are being executed are you getting what i'm saying now you get my teaching when you have a father who gets up and carries bottle no the body is only responding to a spirit the man thinks he's angry but there is a spirit that made him carry that bottle when he wipes your head with that bottle and breaks it and then he turns back and regrets he only executed the will of his spirit are you getting what i'm saying now when somebody sees a biro that is not his own or money that is not your own and you hide and you steal it no you did not steal you were made to steal a spirit influenced your body are you getting what i'm saying now when a lady gets up and cannot see a man and sit down in one place only following men all around don't just say this lady is a bad girl you are a stupid girl no her body is helplessly under the influence of a spirit flogging her is a waste of time because as soon as while you are flogging her the spirit jumps out have you seen armed robbers when they are about to shoot them you see all of them stand like this as if they were not the ones that stole 
the spirits are hanging around in that firing squad waiting for the next victim they will land on and part of the onlookers who are looking with great pity the spirit lands on one of them and he goes home only to begin to execute something he does not understand are you getting the point now yes it is a spirit that will influence you into saying yes to a man who you know is a married man with his wife and he says i love you i love you you didn't even know when you said yes to you you thought you were just in love no you are a slave to a spirit that is leading you to perdition are you getting me human beings are not free until we ascertain that the only influence over their life is the holy spirit that becomes the key to walking in righteousness that becomes the key to walking based on the word of god because the holy spirit comes as a witness to the word how many parents how many families are under yokes of bondage and will only execute so you enter an exam hall the same spirit that can make you of quick intelligence now another spirit makes you blank out you know you read you know you did all you did i went to minister somewhere and um i heard a very touch touching testimony of a gentleman very intelligent and they called him you know for an interview a job interview and when he went there the panelists were happy they looked at his cv and they said yes can you tell us your name talk to us about yourself and why you think we should give you this job that gentleman stood there and he could not remember his name this is somebody who went to school no it's not that he could not remember his name the body a spirit shot the flow are you getting what i'm saying now you are your way you are seated on the throne me marama he marama he marama you are seated on the throne so when you see somebody well behaved no he's not well behaved his spirit has submitted to the Holy Spirit and the body is finding expression listen you can never call an unbeliever well behaved you are joking no the spirit to trouble him is just on retreat let it come and you will watch that body helplessly under the influence are you getting what I'm saying now watch this the same way a spirit can make a body fail that's how the spirit can make any other physical thing fail a spirit can come upon a building project and make it fail are you together does a spirit can come upon a man's cv and that cv becomes the body that that spirit is wearing and that cv starts executing what the spirit looks like and anywhere you take that cv to it cannot give you a job it's not because the cv is not good there is an influence that is producing that failure a spirit can come upon the marital destiny of a lady she may be born again tongue talking but a spirit can also influence dimensions of our lives so that you will see a lady who loves god very beautiful lady loves god but the moment a man looks at her and loves her that spirit creates an impression a bad impression listen there are spirits upon ministries many of them may never listen and humble themselves to learn and grow there are spirits that come upon ministries whoever hears about that ministry will misunderstand it have you seen ministries like that consistently being misunderstood is a spirit Bishop Oyedeko shared with us how that this thing, I mean, this was a great man of God. The church in Kaduna was not growing. People would come, the next thing they would run away. They were carrying all kinds of stories. And then they were fasting with the brethren and the Lord told him, come out. And he came out and he looked and he saw a dark cloud over the church. 
a real church a true church the church of the lord jesus christ with people who are born again and filled with the holy spirit are we following now and he said this is the dark cloud that is stopping people from coming to your church it's making people to misunderstand what you are doing and he commanded that dark cloud and it rolled away and bam living faith opened till tomorrow we are here tonight to challenge every force are you hearing what i'm saying there are four things that jesus did in his ministry and any man who does not do these four things is not doing ministry like jesus number one jesus preached the gospel to preach means to declare to preach means to proclaim to preach means to announce are we together number two jesus taught don't say i'm not a teacher any man who can understand can teach because teaching is the litmus test to show that you have understood a thing anything you have understood you can teach it if you cannot teach it you have not gotten it so jesus taught number three jesus healed the sick don't forget this don't say i'm not called into the healing ministry jesus healed the sick number four jesus delivered the oppressed he casted out devils please let's be very careful so that in a bid to demonstrate spiritual maturity we do not come to a point where we get up and start um i now i know that i've been criticized already again and again so i want you to listen to me there are all kinds of teachings flying in the body of christ if you know me very well you know that i hate imbalance but it is very important that the scope the entire scope of the message jesus gave the church be preached jesus casted out devils and in mark chapter 16 verse 15 he said this he said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils i'm not talking of deliverance that people do all kinds of madness and all of that but for you to ignore the fact that wrong spirits that influence people's lives need to be challenged it's an error are you getting me now it's what the bible calls old wives fables teachings that come and look as a consolation in the church but keep them down and keep them poor these spirits influence our lives and produce the outcomes that we see in our lives when you see an ordinary man anointed no it's not just the body that is anointed the body is only a channel are you getting me for the anointing to find expression the anointing is within the anointing is spiritual you came tonight with prayer requests you came tonight with challenges i want you to know there is a spirit behind that challenge every challenge in any man's life is a sign that there are demon spirits standing that's not a sign that you don't have faith it's a sign that you are in the world the bible says the whole world lies in wickedness hallelujah do you believe what i'm teaching you true freedom then does not just become jumping around and shouting i am free when we can obviously see that there is a, a spirit influencing you how many angry pastors do you know they love god they jump around but you do something they can wind their hand and slap you because you see you can claim you are a man of god you can claim you are whatever but it does not stop those spirits from influencing you listen the influence of spirit over a man's life is a contention it takes light and revelation and the anointing for you to stand in a position where the holy spirit is the only spirit that is authorized to find expression in your human spirit and ultimately through your body but there are many people under the influence of many spirits 
and they will not agree their bodies are helplessly executing masturbation yet they love god their bodies are helplessly executing pornography their bodies are helplessly executing all kinds of things then we try to create messages to say it doesn't matter oh it matters don't let anyone fool you it does it does matter then you lie down in the night to sleep and here comes a gentleman or a gentle lady sleeps with you some of you stand up with bedwetting you stand up with every experience and you just pretend that nothing happened i i pretend i didn't see anything why are you deceiving ah nothing happened i'm okay and you get up and everybody who would have helped you in the day no longer is able to help you and you come back and say no 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 i, I think there's something i'm not claiming look calm down and let the power of god set you free or tell lies and join the crowd of liars with all kinds of struggles in the secret place who will not open up their hearts for true liberty the bible says now the lord is that spirit he said and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i was preaching i was in ministry yet demons were oppressing me shamelessly my own was so bad i will see them physically lie down to sleep and here they come marching gallantly into my room and oppress me they could oppress me so much i can hear people talking in the physical right a lady gets up and has an issue of blood one month two months three months losing blood losing your life no forget about the physical losing of the blood there is a spirit that losing of the blood is is a type of the manifestation of a spirit somewhere you get up a very healthy lady and all of a sudden you find out that there's lump in your breast and you just laugh and say it happens um when you eat in in restaurants too much when you eat fried food lump will come out look at look at the explanation that you are convinced and, and the spirits are saying i like this generation i like the way science is hiding us from them. a man goes to bed healthy and wakes up in the morning and one leg cannot lift again i think the protocol department were there when one small boy did something during counseling i think the last time we had counseling one woman that we prayed for during one of the miracle services so they came for counseling when they came for counseling i looked at the boy the mother was so slim and they were saying that the boy was in occult and all of that and i looked at the boy and i said are you in occult the boy said yes i said who tied your mother he said me i said why now he said they asked him to do it i said go and lose her who was there you were there lawrence i mean this guy so wonders that will not end the boy just went sat down on the ground carried mama's legs and started doing it like this then later he'll say remain small he's about to finish when the boy finished he got up now you would have you would have seen that and said this small boy but this boy is only a slave to a spirit when a child of five years old will not let the mother rest that coconut head is not the physical head there is a there is a spirit that makes that head strong and stubborn are we together now slapping the child in anger is only wasting your time there is a spirit that can influence your life and bad luck follows you you become a magnet you never magnetize anything good if car is to jam people you are the one it will jam if police is to gather some people are suspects it's just when they are catching people you just come in they say follow them you say no 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 i attend koinonia they say go ahead, explain in the police station now you may laugh about it you may laugh about it every bad thing happens to you everyone laughs in the class but the lecturer will ask you to stand up and say why did you laugh as if you are the only person and you were at the back listen that lecturer himself may be a victim to a spirit is joining your heads together and so by coming to his office you now say you I, I don't you smile what is your name now you are entered another level of of trouble humans victims
schemes to spirits that's what is happening in the earth i feel very sad when i see people they get up and they get up in the morning and they do not know listen they do not know that your body is only an instrument of execution there is a spirit that is driving you when you see favor coming to a man no there is a spirit that makes it happen there is an operation there is an anointing are you getting me now you can just be sitting down and then god will speak to you carry ten thousand naira and give a marker why didn't god say somebody should give to you there is something it's not just that okay god has pity. no 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 if you understand this you will know how easy it is to walk in victory you don't focus on this physical body you focus on what spirit and what atmosphere influences it because that's what determines the possibilities there are people who almost never pay for anything when you are going to buy something that's when somebody comes and says do you know i was thinking about you this morning and you tell the person i'm not surprised because the activity of the holy spirit manifesting as different things favor the blessing whatever it is orchestrate events together for you are you getting what i'm saying now as a pastor the day the anointing is strong upon your life that's the day everybody who can help you will not come for the program you stand and preach your life out and everybody say kai we have seen what what god is doing through you and uh, as a family we really appreciate uh, by god's grace next convention will not forget you i assure you and you stand up and go but someone else the day he's coming somebody is about to travel and mysteriously his car may spoil and he'll say let me attend this program and he comes and says god has been asking me to sow into a man this preacher is that man you think it just happens The only thing that grows in a farm without being planted is called what? Everything of worth is planted. Are you getting what I'm saying? Favor does not just come. A ministry does not just grow. Anointing doesn't just come. Revelation doesn't just come. Honor doesn't just come. A man doesn't just become sick. A man doesn't just become healed. Was it not in your Bible? Listen. Listen. That the trouble around Daniel's life was the spirit of the Medes and the Persians. Is that not true? It was happening physically through human beings. But it was a spirit. Because it was under the influence of the, the, the Medes and the Persians. It was a spirit that made men to serve idols. And now a man came called Daniel. And he was praying and his prayer was judging those spirits and so they could not influence the king and he made the king like daniel are you getting me now and the king's liking daniel made him to subscribe to the god of daniel and those spirits said no we have to find a way of bringing enmity between the king and daniel so one day you get up and somebody comes you you thought a neighbor just entered your house and jammed your head you and your destiny helper and left it's not just that a neighbor came a spirit visited your compound using human vessels jammed the head of two people and left all of you together are you getting what i'm saying now a husband and a wife lovely people romeo and juliet the marriage is going well all of a sudden a spirit lands in that house and then something happens a woman who has been minding her business all of a sudden she looks at a text and doesn't see it properly and she thinks that she saw i love you to another woman she carries it and lands the phone on the man's head only to find out that it was maybe to their daughter or a spiritual daughter or something and now enmity starts and a lot of people sit down and say you see uh, just love yourself just manage like that wait and see the part two of that movie the Holy Spirit, I mean, the, a demon spirit will come again into the house. Something will happen. That demon spirit will start making that man to fail in his job. 
are you getting the point now he will return back home with the anger of his job that spirit the same spirit will start making the woman angry and be impatient so her impatience is jamming with his failure in the office what does it produce divorce that's the name at the end of it the apostle and the prophet that should rise from that family no longer has parents and the boy who would have loved church who would have been faithful in church is now forced to follow bad gangs you just thought it was a physical acting the body without a spirit is dead every time you see things around your life not working the way god orchestrated don't sit down and discuss get into the place of prayer immediately there is war happening in the heavenlies there is a clash of spirits they are claiming your body listen do you know that when moses died watch this when michael came to carry the body of moses he found satan too satan wanted to use the body of moses enter it and resurrect as moses are you getting the point now resurrect as moses and start bringing error to people and he needed the body desperately and michael said no 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 i'm not going to drag with you the lord rebuke you how many people saw your mother in a dream a spirit carried the face of your innocent mother landed it in the dream of her enemy and she got up and said i knew it i knew it joshua selman's mother is a witch this one i saw it the woman came with a knife how many of our mothers and fathers have been called witches and wizards and and this is what many prophets see and because they do not have discernment are you getting the point now they now say i saw who some this and that and that and that is it not in your bible when a a, a diviner invokes the supposed spirit of samuel to prophesy i refuse any other spirit from influencing my life i i, I don't have time for that i cannot be a victim for the the failure that is orchestrated look at Job. one more scripture to prove this to you Job, a man who loved god and eschewed evil but the bible says a meeting happened between spirits in the heavens Job was not there oh. a man just gets up in the morning and they have concluded a meeting about you your children are on the way thunder strikes them you just finish furnishing your house thunder strikes it your cattle die mysteriously notice all the deaths that happened there was one one people left to come and testify is that a testimony job i'm the only one who is alive this is what happened and then the meeting was held again and he said let's touch his body ah. so a meeting can happen watch this let's destroy this family and they conclude it you snore your way through the morning wake up and that's the last time you know peace in a long time you are a victim your body is only a victim tonight this is the this is the theme of this miracle service let me tell you when these spirits clear out of the way you will be shocked to see the doors that will open for you all of a sudden you who nobody would call you you will receive a call the last time you spoke with that person was five years he did just call you the holy ghost made it happen because there was a spirit that was stopping that call every time they want to think about you a distraction happens and you remain in that suffering and when you come to us men of god we say it's okay don't worry things will change one day go better that, 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 no, no 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 that's why i told you you must insist tonight you must insist mighty on your throne two things there are three things that give demon spirits access to people and families i want you to pay attention to what i'm saying three things number one covenants 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 you reign you ancient zion's king 
Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. America as a nation. Listen, a man can wear the inner wares of a woman. Watch this. And be moving on the street. And that man returns back and blessings keep following him. A very stupid man, but good things are happening in his life. Let me tell you why. It's because of the covenant of the fathers. There were people who signed an agreement and said, Lord, we give this nation to you. Anyone who comes under the umbrella of this nation is authorized to walk in that blessing. And so, a woman, a man can go for plastic surgery to become a woman and yet come out alive. In Nigeria, you try to even just operate somebody's ear and he will die. Was it the knife that killed him? Are the doctors so daft? Let me tell you what our forefathers left with us. Ready? This is what they left. They went to mountains, valleys, regions. Listen. And all kinds of ancestry. We can fake it and pretend. Listen. I'm a new creation person. I've read the Pauline epistles. Are you getting what I'm saying? I understand the grace of God and the new creation realities very well. But I know God and I understand his ways. Are you following me now? Please come, two people, very quickly. So that I need to, no, no, sit down, Pastor Fami. I promise you can come. Come, stand here, stand here. Watch this. In my example, this guy is a thief. This guy is a wrong occupant. Watch this. If this is my handkerchief and Ken comes to quickly steal it, the moment he hears this, my footsteps, what will he do? He will run away because he's a what? Thief. But if somebody comes and meets promise and say, promise, give me 10 naira, I will give you this handkerchief. And promise gives him 10 naira and he gave him the handkerchief. Is there a contract there? Is there a covenant there? If he sees me coming, will he refuse? Because you see, the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, our forefathers went to idols and they said, protect our wives. Make the plants bring crops for us. In response, we will hold festivals every time. In response, we will donate children to you. In response, they, it was not their fault. They did it because Christianity had not come to Nigeria. Now watch this. When Samuel Ajayi Crowder and many other Christians came, they brought the gospel of salvation, not the mysteries of the kingdom. Are you getting me? They brought the gospel and we salute them. But that was not enough. The understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom that would bring liberty was not taught. So even they themselves died. I traveled to, we were in Gombe. One time Gombe State. And we're going to Yerima's village to go and greet his family. And on our way there, there was a rock like a cap. And they were telling us a story there. That the people used to live there. That that rock used to open physically there was an invocation that would be made on it and it would open and people would enter inside the rock and hide during times of war and this is what they said the last person to enter you are the one that is donated to that rock the last person to come out you are also donated to the rock are we together now and that rock has been faithful has been what the same way our forefathers had bumper harvest, even where there was no rain, mysteriously the crops grew. These spirits kept their part of the contract. All of a sudden, some missionaries just 
found themselves into the village and they said we brought good news and they died in three days the spirit killed them immediately and said you are joking good news of what and then a few people received it and then when they received it they convinced themselves that because they are born again the territory was now changed i watched a documentary brothers and sisters in fiji island fiji island is an island small island but they love god now something happened there were missionaries who came to that place and they so beat the missionaries and oppressed them before the missionaries died they cursed the land they cursed the land and the people and they died and the people thought it did not matter one by one the fish in the river disappeared mysteriously when hunger hit the people from the government down they said something is wrong and god began to reveal to the church around there that look there are there are apostolic activities that must happen in this land if the territory must be cleansed this is what they did they began to pray and then supernaturally they found the grandchildren of the missionaries listen to me they brought the grandchildren of the missionaries to the city they loved them and the children blessed the land and say we release you from the cause of our fathers it's, it's a documentary in less than one week they saw fish crops started growing fiji island changed at once there are so many families that are seated part of the terms of the contract is that if you don't bow down to that idol you will never build a house you will never marry contract sealed now you came that you are born again and you are moving around 35 37 no marriage the other one too is coming when you meet pastors they say no problem are you not born again just believe marriage is going the ones that get married no children mysteriously you are seeing the same patterns happen because covenants are powerful that was the very same principle jesus used to redeem man covenants covenants are you getting what i'm saying now covenants are powerful until they are broken the spirits the custodian of those covenants are authorized to still begin to execute the terms on the, of the covenant even on the victims please believe what i'm saying i prayed for too many people i've ministered to too many people i'm not telling you stories i'm telling you what i was free from number two ignorance ignorance authorizes demon spirits to buffet people psalm 82 verse 5 bless you guys thank you they know not neither will they understand they crop in darkness confusion ignorance and as a result the earth is out of course but have i not said verse 6 here god and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge ignorance ignorance of the mysteries of the kingdom ignorance of the principles of the kingdom ignorance of the keys to true liberty in the spirit number three disobedience personal disobedience deuteronomy when you read i think chapter 28 or so it shall come to pass it says thou shalt diligently hearken to these things to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all nations and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you is tied to your obedience the bible says having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected when it is complete disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives don't let anybody lie to you that when you disobey god nothing happens no it's not about god doing it it's about the laws in the spirit they will not change they didn't start with the old testament those laws predate our dispensation are we together now so tonight i want you to look at your life very carefully especially for those of us who have come have you not seen 
traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other that does not mean you are not born again that does not mean you are not serious with god but it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members to rise up and say no way i come by the blood i come to challenge these things there are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life somebody buys a recharge card to give you it disappears physically that's that's the extent to which this thing is working against you have you seen people like that a guy tells a lady i love you car will jam him two hours later just for trying to verbalize that i'm considering marrying you the car jams him his friend now comes and says Tor, since my friend has come me too i love you something happens let me tell you the meaning of that it puts a stigma on you and your family are you getting me now and they say these people there is death have you not seen lands that people bought land to build house why do you think we dedicate properties why do you think we pour oil on land i know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and receive the slap in the in the in the land true true story because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it gave him a slap when listen when i was in secondary school we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the pump the permanent site that temporal site used to be a hospital are you getting the point where the place that was like the mortuary was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen i tell you many students had encounters with strange beings you are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds sounds that can give you a headache for a long time i remember our school getting ultimate power so that we we'll watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this this nonsense many students were initiated into occultism because of that but tonight we come in the name of the lord the captain of the army that this situation in your life must end i sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies a testimony is simply what happens when the holy spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life any other spirit must create problems tonight daddy mommy sisters and brothers there is need to deal with certain things in our lives i saw poverty in my family as if we offended god Coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background. Your name can be Solomon. You will remain poor until what needs to be addressed be addressed. That's why I told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance. Listen, as we begin to pray, many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone really when you understand this you will know what a miracle is a miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs this is what jesus did to the woman who was bound he looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years and he said woman thou art loose loose he didn't say thou art healed he said thou art loose the moment the spirit left he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body and there she went remember that madman at gathering that was an evangelist in a cave tearing himself into pieces the moment the spirits heard that jesus was coming they were waiting for him at the other side hallelujah mighty on your throne mighty on your throne I'll never forget one time I was praying praying seriously I was in the spirit and I had a vision I saw that there is a tree that is close to where I stay and I didn't see that tree again I just saw a great beast like like a like a being the tail was a snake the eyes were big like human head imagine this head now like an eye 
two of them one here one here and the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger and all he told me is so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity and then it left that was it mighty on your throne mighty on your throne that's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person so your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me and Satan will say amen let's go and then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say help me tonight we are going to cry to the king of kings I don't know if you came for this miracle service especially for those who are family people here you should never go back the same you see the results of people 4.8 5 points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because i didn't read well is that really true how many of you watch film twice to explain it you sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife and that was you didn't read for it yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that i didn't get it it is the reason why you can read a novel of 1000 pages but a lifetime you can't read half of the bible because there is a spirit stopping you if this was a novel some of us would say take this i will bring it for you next week friday and you will exhaust it but from the day you were born the day you were born till today you have not read up to one third of the bible one time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward you started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance after you read it you now threw it away because you cannot help yourself in the flesh it takes the anointing of the spirit that's why he sends carpenters that's why he puts miracle services like this so that you can come under the influence of god's power how about genotype issues ss you get up and find out you are ss or as do you know the bible never mentions the issue of ss or as are you aware of that that thing was a technology that was fabricated by satan to stop people from getting married you see a beautiful lady who has a prophet in her womb to come and then one spirit just brings one one demonic report called ss and they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to mount zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered 
God, the grave lives in me, lives in me. Yeah. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Sing it two more times with faith in your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Rescue the earth lives in me, lives in me. Jump up on your feet and we sing it one more time. Say, and conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, and conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Listen, deliverance, therefore, is a separation. Is the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences the spirits that attempt to influence your life the legal separation brothers and sisters when that happens to you then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and God is ready for us tonight I tell you God is ready for us tonight lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word the body without a spirit is dead the body without a spirit is dead now I realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank him for this revelation lord i now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let the dissatisfaction rise from you Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Just the voices, sing it from your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. The power that can challenge any altar, the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft any generational cause one more time sing it that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power Lives in me, lives in me. Your love. 
of your love, say, Lord, love, that rest to the earth is with me, is with me. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. Behind failures. Challenge the spirit. Behind marital delays. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead. Therefore, I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions pray Oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will, they will bring you into error. So that everything you see misleads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. From the realm of the heavens, challenge powers, challenge forces over your finances. Break it, 
Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle. Listen. As this prayer goes on, miracles will start immediately. Many of you will start getting reports from your body. Many of you will be open to visions. Right now, lift your hands. Hallelujah. My goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction. As you shout it, fire. Some of you visions, your eyes will be open in the spirit. You will see covens catching fire. Mata Labata. Father, you told me tonight is a night of deliverance. There are families under bondage. There are businesses under bondage. Enough is enough. Let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One, two, three. Second, second, I command governments. I command altars. I command spirits. Kaporotoshe. Bring them out. Fire. 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 Bring deliverance tonight. Shaka baba baba baba, embrotos tete, shake tete tete tete, tete 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison, physical poison. As you shout, physically it will come out. Lift your voice, bata bata. Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now, as you shout, Jesus, we are victim. One, two, three. Shaketa He must let you go. He must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. My goodness.
darkness fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the Lord is giving me a word right now there are ladies here there is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you to sleep with you right now Lord where are they let that fire let that fire bring deliverance right now right now right now right now every spirit husband every manifestation every spirit wife every devil that has leads to you it leaves you now now right now he must leave you now hallelujah the Lord is showing me a lady you see physical snakes where is that lady physically physically it appears to you physically the lady is right here please come out I don't know who that lady is physical snake it appears to you you see it let me tell you something after this miracle service you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you that's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks hallelujah lift your voice and pray any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers have been called out of every tribe every tongue i am a, a new creation no longer connected to ancestry lift your voice and pray every altar that connects me to my fathers Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now right now and make your way to the front i see someone having severe pain your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy god is healing people can you appreciate jesus hallelujah there are miracles happening make your way to the front now we'll give you room to testify stand here all the people that are coming out for miracles just stand here right now there are miracles that are happening i see someone like your nose it's like there is an irritation in your nose while we were praying you felt like there was fire on it and now it's lifted now it's lifted completely it's gone right now right now right now i'm seeing someone severe peptic ulcer it hooks you hooks you very seriously as we started praying it just disappeared who is that make your way to the front right now right now right now Rakatatata. I see a lady. You hear a voice telling you you will die. 
not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness God is doing miracles in this place. There are miracles that are happening. Miracles that are happening. I saw this same case in Kaduna this morning. Now, I'm seeing four people. Four people. There is one guy and three ladies. You have pile. Pile. For one of the ladies, when you go to ease yourself, it's as if you are giving birth. Blood comes out. Go and check yourself now you find out that that pile is gone gone back to the devil go and check it please please we are not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the Lord is bringing a, a miracle for Gabriel. Gabriel. I've been fighting this name, but let me bring it out. I'm hearing a name, Asabe. I don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family. Asabe. Asabe, I'm hearing that name. Who is Asabe? Please confirm. Make sure you confirm it. Let's not. Huh? You are Asabe? Uh, but I'm seeing another person again. Who, eh? This you are. Please stand here. Miracles everywhere. Come, tell us very quickly. Come, come. Please help us. Give Aaron. Let's let's coordinate them. Okay, come, sir. Let's just listen to this. Give them the mic, Lawrence. Just testify. Tell us. Look at the crowd. Straight to the point. What happened to you? What is the miracle? Praise the Lord. I am the girl whom the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012. Yes. And now what happened? Every day, once I put my hand, I, I always notice blood coming out. But now, I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people, let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me. Look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus While we are confession. talking, there is a lady who will come confession. strongly under the anointing outside. Please pick that lady and bring her. 
as we are talking the power of god is in fact two ladies two ladies outside mightily by the anointing please pick them and bring them yes ma'am hallelujah on my left thigh i have this burning sensation i don't even know what cause but i know that once it starts it burns me as if i'm sitting on fire okay but now it's gone and since last hearing this voice saying i will die even when i was coming last week i had this fear that i was going to but right now it's gone. completely gone give jesus praise god bless you yes please check yourself if you see a miracle you can come out we are going to pray for the sick but we want to take testimonies we'll give you an opportunity to tell us what god is doing mama please stand up please don't let mama sit down for god's sake give her a chair mama should not be kneeling down praise the yes, lord please. sometimes i normally feel pains in my chest sometimes i normally feel pains in my chest but now i feel very breathe in and out breathe in and out any pain any pain is there any pain is there any pain give jesus praise yes please praise god while he was preaching i was having peptic ulcer so peptic I ulcer out, but while we started praying it left me and there's I'm one more outside go and carry her it left me immediately now i'm not feeling it again. no pain again give jesus praise yes ma praise the, praise the lord i used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002 but um when I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said I should sh we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just I left you. No pain again. Praise the Let Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games, please. Check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front at least 10 people check it right now god is doing a miracle don't sit back inside and outside lower abdominal region lower abdominal region that miracle is happening right now right now right now at least 10 people 10 people with that pain as soon as you check it make your way to the front celebrate jesus god is healing them they are coming they are coming all of you you can come and stand here the moment you receive a miracle please stand here they'll confirm you at least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region hallelujah i'm seeing a gentleman you came here with a throat condition in fact um let me just describe to you they are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that uh, an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of god will come upon you as a witness to that lord where is that lady right now where is that lady identify her oh god by the power of god right now right now right now please bring the lady out god is healing her mother right at home and god is using what is happening as as a point of contact as a point of contact i'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump i'm seeing one on the left left side please check it check it when you receive a miracle testimony is one way to seal it and keep it the lord is showing me three ladies your hair falls every time you go to comb your hair you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair 
that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point Praise the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my stomach here but now i'm not feeling completely it. gone yes are you sure yes. how long has it been Delicious. come on koinonia let's not get too used to miracles in this place <laughs> hallelujah it never returns to you in the name of jesus christ the next person please my goodness, look at what God is doing. God is giving people miracles. Go ahead. My name is like, I'm pregnant. It's to come like pain as in I'm pregnant and I've been complaining that for months. But today, when the prayer was going on, I felt relieved and my stomach is In fact, open. as she was talking, hold on. The Lord opened my eyes. There is a lady. Your stomach is already swelling. This is almost, it's even beginning to embarrass you. It's not just like a stomach protruding. You are feeling it very hard and stiff. Um, it's, you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid. Please check it right now. God is giving you a miracle. God is giving you a miracle. God bless you. Bless you. Quickly. When they say we should shout, praise the Lord. So I now shout. The stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria, but I can't feel it again. Completely gone. Yes. Give Jesus praise. It never returns again. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Um, recently, I started having this eye pain. When I'm walking, doing other things, one of the eyes get blank and I don't see again. But now, after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I saw this abdominal pain almost all the time. But it just left me immediately. Give Jesus praise. It never returns to you again. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So, I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that God is to give me every day when I'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time I try to push further I realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now, but what right happened? now when at the mention of the name Jesus I felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes, of that creativity yes, comes, sir. comes to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At the shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Believe me, that name works. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika consigning pain. In pain joint. you went to the hospital yeah what did they say is wrong with you they, did, they couldn't see the anything they couldn't see anything yeah okay and when you were praying you prophesied that there is a uh, 10 people here that that god is working on yes their system. And, and now what has happened to you the pain is gone. the pain is completely even gone the medical, Jesus praise. even the medical report is in my room the medical report is in your room yeah. you go and check yourself and you find out all of you that were under the anointing when you get up don't just go back to your seat check you will find out that all kinds of things have happened you are not just falling for nothing praise the lord praise the, praise the lord i'm trusting god for a new set of dentition my teeth are just go ahead the power of god is on her Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there is this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the case, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later, you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I notice 
like swelling up and sometimes i very i feel like very, a swelling there yeah, yeah and feel, now have you checked it yes I, is there I, anything I there okay, completely gone come on yeah. give jesus praise it never returns again in the name of jesus christ praise the lord i want to thank god for the spirit of fear as in i do get scared a lot but i now i'm free in the, name the spirit of, of fear come it never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I want, to, I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child. When, when, I, was, when I was young, I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I, I feel relieved. I just Completely. Want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes second of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her. Fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced. I I've saw been that shaking, a baby, I've a been finger. shaking it. I've been shaking it and no I'm pain now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. This Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress, Mama. If she's if she's out because she's sick, Mama is on as I make her do Please, you people should not stress this old woman. She should, even when she's coming on, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her please the lord is is wiping the tears in your family you believe that when a word comes like this, it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother yes. do, do you have an elder brother yes. what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though is your brother yes. where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. is that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia that the lord said he's going to connect him to a rich man he should be faithful to that man Amen. that man will bless him Amen. father let there be breakthrough in this family in the name of jesus asabe gabriel oh your name is gabriel your name too is gabriel sir who is titi lion titi lion i'm hearing a name titi lion Please let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Layo. I'm hearing the name Titi Layo. Titi Layo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing. The Lord is. Sir. It won't be too long you are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is not word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it, but it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before them. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way. Because you have come with your heart open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I lay my hands, I pray. Right now. That you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the lord jesus christ i hear breakthrough for you sir this is what i hear the lord is saying i should announce breakthrough to you father i hold his hands and i announce breakthrough in jesus name praise the lord your mother is sick what's wrong with her she has been bleeding for the past one year bleeding you, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing. No, sir. You, you are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, sir. no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. 
Hold my hands. Look at me. Do you believe God will touch your mother? Where is she? Where is home? Taraba. Taraba State. Yes, sir. You are from Taraba. Yes, sir. Lord, show Mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As he touches you, he touches her. Please don't just come out at will. Ah, you are related to her? Your sister is Titi Lion. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Kaduna. What's she doing? She's schooling at Kaduna. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You. I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her. Is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes, this thing. Is yes, that sir. true? Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So, if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back. Please, once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then... Don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer requests ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles. Worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. You do might, you do glory, you do glory, you're a awesome is your name, awesome is your name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you, any child, hear me, I'm saying this especially to we young people, any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, sir. Please sit down. Your dad. Welcome, sir. Once more. Straight, straight to the point. His legs are swollen because it's been long I saw him. He's been, he doesn't breathe well. And at the same time, he's having problems with mama. And none of his children look at him except me. The same problem that mama is having, like faithful. It's just similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Let there be deliverance, oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now. As I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ and there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this, that as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do my God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're oh God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at a very awesome serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How would you like to have a child? That do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names. We lay hands upon this child. We are not only praying that God will heal him, but God will use him. My God, I pray right now. Let the brain begin to develop. We cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness. Right now in the name of Jesus.
out of her right now. Let her go. Out. Out of her. Out. Out. Release her right now. Madam is saying, sorry, who brought her? I say, I, I go village, now I'm mad from village. I go election. I will charm from village. Look at this. Mama went for election. They fired something upon her head. Now she's mad. Is she mad? Is she your dog now? Yes. You are mad. No, you are. You are not mad in the name of Jesus. Say, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. In the name of Jesus. Whoever organized that charm on your head, it returns back to them sevenfold. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter. You are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? Come. Do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you? I'm looking at you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing you smoking something. Eh? Tell me the truth. Don't tell lies. Yes, this is what death would have killed you. You are smoking a. Uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? In their hem, you go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. This is. Look at. Look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a well wind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you'll be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are, oh, you are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Amen. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it. But I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. I curse that madness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for supernatural healing. Look at me. Look at me. Lift your hands. Forget about the wound. Lift it up. Careful. You broke the hand. Oh, it can't lift. Oh, I see. No, no, no. If it can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes it, go in this place. If you know you smoke it, go. Or codeine. Altar. Once I make the altar call. Just run and come and kneel down here. Because tonight is your night of salvation. Please, don't play games with your destiny. Anything you smoke, anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency. The moment there's time for altar call, please make your way here. We love you. But then the Lord wants to touch you. Let's hurry up because our time is gone. Your name is here. Out.
on the request right now at the same time an altar call is co as an altar call will be going those who need jesus christ you are here right now inside and outside there are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies the ones that i spoke to now is the time you can come before the presence of god don't feel bad we're a family and any other person there are those who are saying lord i'm tired of the way my life is I need a new beginning as we pray please come and wait here join this lady very quickly celebrate them as they come inside and outside please let's save time celebrate them as they come inside and outside god bless you a new beginning god is giving you a new beginning don't be ashamed don't be embarrassed you are saying lord jesus i make up my mind to walk with you god bless you god bless you koinonia are you celebrating them god is saving sinners keep coming from outside please clear the way for them if they are coming salvation is a very serious issue clear the way for them so that they'll come don't let any devil stop you you are welcome i know we're out of time but please make your way to the front right now make your way to the front we love you no man condemns you he can give you a new beginning hallelujah hallelujah I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Let your life come upon me. I break free from habits, from sins, and everything that destroys my life. From today, I'm a child of God. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus. I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking. You will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday, unfailingly, please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department and um, will fire you up you'll be with them for at least a month they will guide you the gentleman is waving his hand salute them everybody congratulate them stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute please everybody rise we're rounding up stretch your hands towards a prayer request your request is here begin to speak prophesy prophesy over it in the name of jesus christ prophesy over it prophesy over it lord unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come are you praying lord do miracles every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here we judge that spirit every spirit every covenant every influence makata lato every spirit responsible for barrenness here yeah, responsible for any setback in the name of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it lord let your people have testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we declare that every request every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ 
and you will stand to testify before the people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now lift your hands and receive the prophecy. I decree and I declare over you every confusion in your life, every cry for direction. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may you receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Every area of confusion, I arrest it right now. You will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are students, I pray for your academics. The exams that are about to come. Your best result in your various institutions. This exam is what will produce it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you record five points. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for every family represented here. Whatever has stagnated your family. By this anointing I declare. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has covered your glory. So that the glory of the Lord upon your life will not be seen. In the name of Jesus we tear that veil off. We tear that veil off. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Whoever needs to help you. Before next miracle service. I call them forth into your life. Mysterious helpers. Mysterious helpers. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Fresh grace for prayer. Fresh anointing for prayer. Every lack of passion for the things of God. I kill it right now in the name of Jesus. Every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life, it dies a natural death here tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. With these hands that are lifted, go and begin to produce results. Go and heal the sick. Go and open doors for the oppressed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle marriages. We release those marriages right now. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle jobs. We release those jobs right now. Please believe me as I pray. We release those jobs right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death. That the devil has said you will not see the end of this year. In the name of Jesus, we lift up that embargo. We lift up that embargo. Favor like you have never seen, receive it right now. Open doors like you have never seen, receive it right now. Breakthroughs like you have never seen, receive it right now. I speak life to every dying thing in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever has rejected you, may they look for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command prophetic dreams. Mysterious spiritual experiences. May God show you the solution to your problems. In dreams and visions. Whoever is behind the failure of your life. We command judgment upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of jesus I declare that the seal of the blood is upon you. You have no covenant with failure. You have no covenant with death. May God use you mightily. 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 Use you mightily. I declare, may the mantle of honor come upon your life. 
that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence I cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may god bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ i see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically i'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically i prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of jesus christ for one of you, the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before October. Your wedding will happen before December 31st. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we decree and declare over your life. You will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of God. There is someone here you are standing, you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch. One week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you'll have a few details celebrate them koinonia hallelujah hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye